Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of Closed Casket, a Hercule Poirot mystery by Sophie Hanna. So this is one of the Sophie Hanna continuations of the Poirot series. Uh, as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then we're going to go through and check out my admittedly limited number of tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... What I intend to say to you will come as a shock. Lady Athelinda Playford has planned a house party at her mansion, but it is no ordinary gathering. She announces that she has decided to change her will, cutting off her children and leaving her fortune to someone who has only weeks to live. Among Lady Playford's guests are Belgian detective Hercule Poirot and Inspector Edward Catchpool of Scotland Yard, who have no idea why they've been invited, until Poirot starts to wonder if Lady Playford expects a murderer to strike. When the crime is committed and the victim is not who Poirot thought it would be, will he be able to solve the mystery? Let's find out. So uh, she thanks Matthew Pritchard, um, which I, I wondered whether that's the same Matthew Pritchard who used to be in Dirty Sanchez. Probably not, it's quite a common name. Um, but I saw him speak at the vegan camp out. So uh, there's a great quote here. Uh, it's the weakest just have to shout the loudest, make others suffer. And so uh, the lady in this is a, uh, she writes crime novels. She's a bit like a kind of version of Ariadne Oliver, I suppose. Um, and uh, there's a resolution in one of it where uh, she discovers that her suit is another word for Harry and realises there is no lady in a suit. Uh, and then we get, You have just given away the resolution of the mystery, said Gather Cole impatiently. Why should Monsieur Poirot read it now that you've spoiled it for him? Don't be silly, Michael. Lady Playford waved away his objection. There are many intricacies to the story about which Joseph has said nothing. I should hope that nobody would read one of my books only to find out the answer. Monsieur Poirot, I'm sure, is no philistine. It's the working out and the psychology that matters. And that's kind of how I read um, books like this one, Any Murder Mystery. I'm, I don't really care who did it or why. And uh, I don't try and predict it in advance. I'm quite happy to let the story unfold at its own pace, you know. And we get this little, this little exchange here. I should marry you even if it meant having my head chopped off in a month, dearest one. And then I should have a dilemma, whether to keep your head or your body, said Claudia. I think all things considered, the head. Why not keep both, my divine girl, he asked. Is there a rule forbidding it? I think there must be, or else it's no fun at all, said Claudia. Yes, if I refuse to choose between lifeless head and bloodless body, both will be taken away and burned, and I will have neither. I choose the head. So I thought this was just an interesting little monologue. Why do we allow words to have such power over us? Kimpton asked of nobody in particular. He had started to walk slowly around the room. They are lost in air the moment they leave our mouths, yet they stay with us forever if they're arranged in a memorable order. How can three words, stone cold dead, be so much more upsetting than the wordless memory of a dead child? And we get this little bit. One only has to look at the political situation to see that that is not so. Vast numbers of people on this tiny island believe they would be better off as an entirely separate country. And that's, you know, more relevant now than when this book was set at least. So one of the guys is a doctor and Poirot says, you chose a profession that enables you to prove you are right. I did, yes. The study of literature is for those who enjoy speculation. I prefer to know. Tell me all these murderers you've caught. In how many cases did you have absolute proof that would have held up in a court if the beggar in question had not confessed? Because a confession proves nothing at all. I'll prove it. I, Randall Kimpton, murdered Abraham Lincoln. I was not born when it happened, but nevertheless, I'm an ambitious young cove, so I did not let that stop me. I killed President Lincoln. Let me get this fun little line. Um, Opposites attract, as everyone knows, but there is also something satisfying about meeting the female version of oneself. Claudia is, quite simply, a version of me that I wish to defile in all the usual enjoyable ways. Really, what could be better? The truth offends her pride, so she insists it is otherwise. You must bear in mind, Edward, that the vast majority of people are disinclined to confront anything that is messy or peculiar. Most people are scared of most things, never forget that. It is really only writers and artists who can cope with the puzzling ambiguities and those with an investigative inclination. I'm sure Hercule Poirot would be fascinated by all of this. Another great quote. When evil makes itself orderly, the danger is severe, most severe indeed. So yeah, that's about all I have to share with you from Closed Casket. Overall, I thought it was pretty good, uh, a decent-ish, Hercule Poirot mystery, probably like a 3.5 out of 5. It's not the best one that Sophie Hannah's done. Um, it's not the worst that she's done. And obviously the original ones are much better, but it is still very much reading if you're a completionist like myself and a big Poirot fan. So yes. So there we have it, that's what I made of Closed Casket by Sophie Hanna. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.